I'm part of this men's telegram group, and today we were talking about uh, what a woman says and what a woman does. What a woman says she's attracted to and what she's really attracted to. Now this may offend some women, but I find women to be somewhat like children at times. Not all women, and I also find some men to be like children also. Especially nowadays, some men don't seem to grow up. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> but many times a woman will tell you that she's attracted to this or attracted to that. Well, for example, almost every woman will tell you that they want a nice guy, a good guy. But yet there are probably how many good guys in her DMs and she's not interested in them. And yet you'll see her go out with the guy that she complains about, that she says treats her badly, or she says just doesn't seem to want to be with her. And I understand that because sometimes in my life I've found myself attracted to women who were somewhat distant, or let's say this, emotionally unavailable, not easy. <clears throat> they played hard to get, or maybe they were hard to get. So I understand that. But a woman will never admit to you that she is attracted to the bad boy. Most women. Now, there are exceptions, of course. But the, the thing that they were talking about was that a lot of women think they can go out and party till they're about 30. And then they start complaining because they want to find a good man. But the good men are going out with the 21, 22, and 23-year-old girls. They realize that there's a really good chance that this woman has went out and sowed her wild oats. <clears throat> and contrary to what women have been told in the media and the agenda, whatever that is and wherever that comes from, that they can go out and do this and still be considered <clears throat> valuable in the sexual marketplace, it's just not true because most men don't want a woman who's been with a lot of other men. Now, it doesn't make the woman a bad woman. No one is saying that. Maybe some guys say that, but I don't believe that. The problem is, it just, I, have you ever heard this example? Let me, let me tell you this one. If you had a choice between, well, let's say a new home and a used home, what are you going to take? You're probably going to take the new home. Of course, in my case, I like old historic homes, so. <laughs> okay, how about an iPhone? If you had a choice between a new iPhone and a used iPhone, you're probably gonna take the new one. I would take the new one, I'm sure you probably would also. A little better example. And now, am I comparing women to iPhones? No, I'm just using that as an analogy, okay? It's the same way the men look at women. A man would much prefer a woman who hasn't been with a lot of men than one who has been with a lot of men. It's just the way men look at things. Now, you may get some what they call beta-type males out there. They go, oh, no, that's not true. But they probably haven't dated a lot. They have no experience with women. Because what I find and what a lot of men find is a woman who has been with a lot of men has carrying is, how would I say it, has some emotional baggage she's carrying, more so than a woman who has not been with a lot of men. I've been married more than once, as some of you know, and I've dated a lot of women, I've had a lot of long-term relationships, and I've had comparisons. I've been with women who've been with a lot of men, and I've been with women who have been with no one. I've dated several women, and was married to a couple that had been with no men and they made much better partners than the ones who had been with a lot of different men. The women who have been with a lot of different men seem to really have a hard time respecting men because probably, not always, they don't respect themselves because if they give themselves up easily to this man and that man, they just don't value themselves as a woman who is saving herself for marriage or for the right man. Now, this is just my opinion. This is just what I've experienced in my lifetime. 
There are exceptions to this. I'm not saying that, and I'm not bad-mouthing women who have been with a lot of men. I'm just telling you that this is the way men look at things. You don't have to like it. It's just the way it is. Now, not all men, but the majority of men. Get on social media. You'll see some of the red pill guys just really trashing women uh, that have a high body count, as they call it. I don't agree that it's correct to trash anybody for whatever choice in life they make. You don't have to agree with it, you don't have to like it, and you don't have to associate with a person that does that if that is a dislike for you. But it doesn't make a person inherently bad or good. But what has happened in our society and our culture is they've told women <clears throat> and, and, and got them to believe that they can go out and do the same things men do and not suffer any consequences in the social arena or in the cultural, cultural arena, that it's not going to make any difference. And what they find when they get older is it does make a difference, but unfortunately, there's not enough older women around to guide these younger women like there used to be in the past. In the past, if a woman got to be about 25 and she wasn't married, the older woman would start calling her an old maid because they knew that she needed to start having children because time was slipping. If you look back in the past histories, women started having children very young. Now, a lot of women will have a fit about that. It's, oh, it's terrible that they have to start that young. Why is it so terrible? If a woman gets pregnant by the time she's 18, or I know the girls around here just got pregnant when they're 15, even younger, how does that ruin their life? It will only ruin their life if they allow it to. It ruins their life in the perspective of our culture who says that a woman needs to have a career, she needs to go out and make her mark on the world. Women are different. They do not get the same satisfactions out of life that men get. The same as men wouldn't get the same satisfaction out of staying home, changing diapers, raising the kids, and being a house husband, as women would get doing it being a housewife. We are completely different people. Now, as I said before in the other um, examples, there are exceptions to these rules, but in general, men get more fulfillment out of going out there and conquering and being adventurous than women do. And we're also made different. It's much safer for a man to live alone than a woman to live alone. It's much safer for a man to travel alone than a woman to travel alone. But the media, movies, TV, Disney, all of them want to tell us that this is not true, that men and women are equal. Now, I believe we're all equally valuable in the eyes of God, but we're not equal, which is obvious. But hey, TVs and movies can make it look like we're equal in all aspects, but this is a fallacy. So think about these things, if you're a man or if you're a woman, and as I said, if a woman's been with a lot of men, it doesn't make her a bad woman, and there are exceptions. So you have to decide what's right for you, whether you're a man or a woman, but you need to know the consequences of your actions. And you men need to know that you're probably taking a little more of a risk if you, if you um, get into a long-term relationship with a woman who's been with a lot of different men. And women, you gotta know you're taking a risk if you decide to party through your 20s and wait till you're 30, 31, 32 to try to find a man to settle down with. There are consequences to the, our actions, all of our actions. I've suffered many of the consequences of my actions and the mistakes I made when I was younger, but I have learned from them and you can too. All right, that's all I got for today. Hit that like button, subscribe. Thanks for watching. Hope you got something out of this that is of value to you. Take care.